Was Apple's launch of Vision Pro a failure? Welcome everybody, welcome to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here, and whether or not Apple's new spatial computing device was going to be a failure or a success has been highly debated well before the device ever launched. Right now, the day that I'm recording this video is the day that Vision Pro has officially gone on sale. You can buy it right now if you'd like to. And we now have some idea on how Apple's initial stock of the device actually sold. So do we have any better clue on whether or not Vision Pro is a success or a failure? Let's talk about it. Analysts have pegged that Apple will have somewhere between the 60 to 80,000 units of Vision Pro for the initial launch, like launch day, which is February 2nd. And it looks like that initial supply of Vision Pro quickly sold out. Within 15 minutes, shipping times have slipped for the entire set of Vision Pro between the 256, 512, and one terabyte configurations of the spatial computing device. That's pretty decent in terms of sell through for this initial run. If Apple did sell all 80,000 of those units, it's looking like a rough estimate of $280 million. That's quite a bit for 15 minutes of sales, especially when we're talking about a $3,500 brand new category of device. But this is Apple we're talking about. Is $280 million in revenue good? Bad? Somewhere in between? I mean, we don't even know if those are the numbers. All we know that Apple sold through its initial stock. There have been reports of issues manufacturing Vision Pro, and if that's the case, maybe Apple didn't hit those expected 60 to 80,000 unit numbers that they were targeting. It could be a far smaller number, and all we know is that Apple sold through that smaller number that it may have had available. Point is, all this is speculation and we do not know right now how many units Apple has sold or whether or not this launch is going well or going poorly. Honestly though, it doesn't matter. See, Apple isn't looking to sell millions upon millions upon millions like it sells through iPhones. No, they expect to sell a lower number of this device. I mean, it's a $3,500 computer strap to your face that most people don't actually need, even if they want it. What's really the goal here is for Apple to get an initial premium product on the market. It allows developers to start developing real apps and test their devices on real headsets and starts to build out that app ecosystem. Apple also starts to get a better feeling for how people will use Vision Pro later down the line when they introduce new models. I know I don't even have the current version of Vision Pro in my hands yet, but Mark Gurman and Ming-Chi Kuo have both hypothesized that Apple will be releasing new versions of Vision Pro in 2025. And yes, I said versions with an S on the end. See, Apple's first releasing the Vision Pro now as he is premium high-end device. By 2025, Apple hopes to introduce two models, one a low-end, more affordable option, and then a new updated high-end model. That way we'll have much more breadth of the market, there'll be more people that are able to try it at a lower price point, but Apple still will cater to the high-end with a new upscale version, likely including the M3 or possibly M4 chipset on that version. I know we're about to have like the actual version of Vision Pro that we can use and strap to our heads, it'll be a finished product, but Apple still has so much work that it needs to do. I mean, app, half of Apple's apps aren't even updated to run natively on Vision Pro. We don't have Vision Pro versions of Home or Maps or I believe even voice memos. Apple has a whole slew of apps that it's still working to convert to native Vision OS experiences. That's a big deal, especially now we're getting close to launch. On top of that, we need to wait for more developers. Apple has to work with the developers to craft their apps to be available on Vision Pro. And we're waiting for more experiences and more entertainment to come to the device. I mean, at launch, Apple only has 150 movies that it will be releasing in like 3D viewing. 150 is a good amount, but not a ton. Apple looks to expand that by a large margin by the time a second generation unit is finally released. Not to mention what's coming up here in June. Apple will be holding its annual developer conference and it'll be likely releasing a Vision OS 2 beta where it'll introduce 
more new features and be able to hone the experience of Vision Pro that will likely run on that second generation or third generation headset. This is all a long way of saying that right now we have no clue on whether Vision Pro is a massive runaway success or an abysmal, embarrassing, egg on face failure. We're not going to know for years, likely, which camp this is going to fall into. Apple has invested an incredible amount of time and money and resources into developing Vision Pro, and it's not going to back down easily. I think Apple has a whole lot more in store for Vision Pro and the future of its spatial computing devices. I think it's going to be really exciting, and the biggest part will be when Apple is able to bring that price down to a more approachable point. When things are more filled out, there are more apps, experiences, content that we can all enjoy. Heck, we don't even have Netflix or YouTube here at launch. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think Vision Pro will be a runaway success or do you think it's going to fall flat? Let me know in the comments or on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. You can also let me know on threads at Andrew O'Hara 941. Otherwise, stay tuned. We'll bring you more Vision Pro coverage as it launches.